Rock and Roll Geek Show 971. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, is the one and only Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Friday, January 10th, 2020, and it's 7.05 p.m. when I'm recording this episode. Before we do the show, by the way, this is my long-awaited top albums of 2019. I'm finally getting to it, but before we get into that, I want to say rest in peace, Neil Peart. Uh, one, one of, if probably not the greatest drummer of all time, according to everybody on Facebook. Because if you opened up Facebook today, this afternoon, I was on my way to band practice and um, <clears throat> got a text from Michael Shaw and said, Neil Pert died. Should I work on a, on a Rush tune? Because Butler's have a gig uh, tomorrow. And uh, anyway... I found out practice was about 1.30. I found out about 1.25. And when I got out of practice, if you got on Facebook around 4 o'clock today, all you saw was rest in peace Neil Peart. So the guy was obviously very revered as far as drummers go. And yeah, great drummer. I saw Rush open. I saw Rush headlining over... See, this was during the, I think this was the Hemispheres tour, or it could have been Hemispheres or Moving Pictures. I think it was Hemispheres. Uh, UFO supported, whatever that tour was. I think UFO um, just came out with either Wild and Willing and Innocent or Mechanics. I think it was Mechanics. And I believe Cheap Trick and Rockets were also on the bill. Don't quote me on that, but I think that was the bill. The concert was great. I... Honestly, I fell asleep during Rush. I, maybe I got too wasted. And I don't know. I was there to see Cheap Trick and UFO. Rush was okay. I'm not a huge Rush fan, but I know that Neil Peart was just highly regarded among all drummers. And if you opened up Facebook today, that's all there is on Facebook. And, I'm, and I posted a joke saying, did anybody, somebody die? Because uh, I can't find anything out about it on Facebook. And... <laughs> I got chastised because I was making a joke at, uh, I guess, a joke at Neil Peart's expense. No joke meant to to Neil Peart and his family. Rest in peace, great drummer Neil Peart. Neil, excuse me, Neil Peart. I mispronounced the name. I am sure on Monday we will hear from Eddie Trunk that um, he already knew about it and was texting with with. Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson offering condolences and they were chatting back. I'm sure we'll hear that. Eddie Trunk probably already knew about it and was just not allowed to tell anybody. But anyway, rest in peace, Neil Neil Peart. All right, let's get into the top 2019 albums according to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. This was an extremely difficult one for me to do because there were a lot of albums let me close out the face well i can't close out the face because i got some people other people posted their list as well on the rock and roll geek facebook group <clears throat> i'm getting notifications uh chastising me for uh bad mouthing <laughs> uh neil peer which i did not do <clears throat> so like i said it was very difficult for me to put together the top 10 list. There's a lot of ties because oh, I'm losing my voice already. Ugh! Let me take a sip of this fine. Te- I'm finishing up the first Tecate. Actually, the second Tecate of the day. I had one at band practice. Ah, Second one of the day is always the best. We are opening. I had band practice because the but. Oh, get another Tecate here. <clears throat> The Butlers are playing tomorrow. We're supporting Pat Travers, and the show has been sold out for <clears throat> several weeks now. Um, my friend Eric Mortensen, the the um, 
metal CPA, who just, by the way, did an interview with uh, Pat Travers on his podcast, Metal Mordo's Metal Museum. Good interview. He's obviously a, a huge Pat Travers fan. Well, his wife, Linda, put the show together and... She put us on the bill, and it's been sold. Like I said, it's been sold out for a long time, and uh, which is awesome. <laughs> Only thing not awesome is they don't. We had a set a setup in front of their drums, so we don't give enough enough room to jump around on stage. But that's okay. Pat Travers always great live. The guy's a fucking fantastic guitar player. So that's what the Butlers are doing tomorrow. All right, let's get in <clears throat> to my top two top ten of two thousand nineteen. Like I said, there's several ties. Uh, some some honorable mentions here. Honorable mentions go to the treatment. A lot. Of, some people on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group, which I did not create, but I do approve people, mentioned the treatment. I have not heard that album, so I cannot put that on my top ten list. Uh, honorable mentions to Airborne had a new album out, which did not give it a hard enough listen to put that on my top ten Honorable mention to the Muffs. The great Kim Shattuck died. Have not listened to that one enough to put that on my top ten. So I apologize to to the great Kim Shattuck. May she rest in peace. Uh, honorable mention to Jet Boy. Did not make my top ten. But they were on some people's top ten on the Rock and Roll Geek Show Facebook group. Uh, who had them on their top ten? Uh... I don't see who put them on. I know somebody did, but I can't see the name at the moment. But honorable mentions to Jet Boy. Honorable mention to Angel. They would have made my top ten if they had. A, if that, there were about five songs less on their album on the album. Very ambitious of them to put out a sixteen song album. I think there's sixteen songs. Barely missed my top 10. There's some good songs on there, but there's some really, really bad songs on that album. So for that reason, did not make my top limb, but top um, 10, but they get an honorable mention. Another honorable mention goes to the brother Steve with the great Jeff Whalen in the band. I have a feeling Jeff didn't do much writing on this album. It's a decent album. Little too... <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. A little too power pop for me, which I love power pop, but it's, I don't know, something about the songs, they didn't quite do it enough for me to make the top 10. They barely missed it. But honorable mention to them. Any other honorable mentions? Let's see, other people who have the Coolies. Somebody had the Coolies, which I have not heard that album. Pale Lips, don't know them. Honorable mention to. Let's see. Honorable mention to Volbeat. Uh, James Logan had Volbeat. Oh, he also had Jet Boy, Born to Fly. He had them at number nine. Do not know who Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes are, but I'll give them an honorable mention. Other people who had albums, uh, somebody had Airborne Bone Shaker at number five, Chad Burns. I guess I'm going to have to give that a stronger listen. So, uh, As you know, I'm the one who uh, broke Airborne in the United States. Yeah, uh, Adrian Bashan. Nominated Bombus, which I had never heard of Bombus. They're from Sweden, but honorable mention to them. Let's get right into my list. Very difficult for me to put this in any particular order. That's the difficult part. Number 10 in the list. It's actually a two-way tie for number 10. The band is called Red Cross. They put out an album several years ago, about four years, three or four years ago, called Researching the Blues, which I did not like in the least. This album, way better. Uh, a lot of people on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group had Red Cross on their list. Made my number 10, tied for number 10, Red Cross. This song is called What's a Boy to Do? Yeah. 
There you go. Red Cross. Also on the top ten, uh, Michael Street had Red Cross at number five. Uh, Ken Parker had them at his second favorite album of the year. It was in his top five. <clears throat> now, a lot of people had Alice Cooper breadcrumbs on their list. I cannot put... First of all, breadcrumbs is all... is. All covers, I believe. And it's an EP. Two things. I cannot put an EP on my top ten, and I cannot put a covers record on my top ten. At least th- that's my rule. So for that reason, I did not put Alice Cooper breadcrumbs, although it is good. He does Your Mama Won't Like Me from Susie Quattro, which Feather Witch does, by the way. So I could not put that on. O- other honorable mentions also. Um, the Hunt Sales album. I know Sandy Hyde is way big on that, way uh, high on that album. So is Casey Crenshaw. I like that album, but it did not make my top 10. So uh, tied for number 10 for me, though. Why don't we do, why don't we play a couple of songs from the tied for number 10? Speaking of Alice Cooper, Hollywood Vampires. I was really, really surprised that this would make the top 10 for the Rock and Roll Geek Show. But the album's surprisingly good. Uh, Johnny Depp, who I'm not a big fan of, but he wrote most of this. Uh, uh, what I heard, he wrote a lot of this album. And Damn If It doesn't have some good songs on it, man. Not my favorite, but, you know, I got I to gotta give uh, props when, where props are props. Did I say props? I got to give credit where credit is due. It made my top ten. So while we, we're going to play... We, we are going to play that while we thank you who donated to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. You're, as Adam Curry says, you're not just donors, you're producers of the Rock and Roll Geek Show. So I would like to thank the producers of this episode of the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Let's play some Hollywood vampires while we thank everybody. Let me find my list here and let me take a sip of this fine Tecate number three. Ah, all right, let me find my list here. Yada da, da da da. All right, let's start with Who's Laughing Now. There's several good songs on this album. There's a little bit too many covers, so kind of breaking my rules. There's what, three covers on this album? Three or four? So, <laughs> might be breaking my, my own rules, but there's enough originals where I can. Uh, Screw it, it's my list. All right, here is who's let me put these in order here. Who's laughing now? All right. There are several ways you can donate to the Rock and Roll Geek Show, friends. And I appreciate every way. You can go to patreon.com slash RNR Geek, like the following people did. Tim Shaw, ten dollars. Joseph Coyne, ten dollars. Thank you to Joe Pollack, my bodyguard, 666, $6.66. Rodney Cross for $5. John Boveri, $5. Derek Lewis, $5. Dan Gerawan for $5. Grant Farquhar, $5. Thank you to Jamie Jefford for the five dollars. Thank you to Marshall York five dollars. Thank you to Marshall York five dollars. Thank you to. Did I think Grand Farquhar? Wait a minute, where am I? Let's go back a little bit. Dan Gettawan five dollars. Grant Farquhar five dollars. Jamie Jefford five dollars. Marshall York five dollars. Thank you to Brad Shit five dollars. Daniel Segan, $5. Betty Wood, $5. Thank you to Michael Street, friend of mine and friend of the Rock and Roll Geek Show, for $5. Thank you to Brian Springer for the $5. Chiaki Hinohara of the Japanese Metalhead Show and the and Metal Woman Podcast and one of my best friends came over for dinner on Sunday. We had a great dinner, although I ruined the dinner, but it was still nice, nice visiting with friends. We ate still. Thank you to Robert Harvey for the $5. Thank you to Ken Kennedy for the $5. Thank you to my podcast mentor and host, Matt at Dad, $5. Thank you to Kirk Crawford for the $3. Thank you to Chad Burns for the 250 
Thank you to Derek Coward for the 250. Thank you to Paul R Derek Coward of Comic Book Noise, by the way. Thank you to Paul Rube for the 225. Thank you to Adrian Bosch on Bosch Rock on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page, which I did not create, but I do approve people. Just got to answer two questions so I know you're not an Iranian spy. Thank you to Patrick Shanahan for $2. Thank you to Metal Dan for the $2. Thank you to Mike Dixon for the $2. Thank you to Bruce McMillan for the $2. Thank you to Eric Stowe for the $2. Thank you to Matthew Hunt, $2. Paul Underwood, maker of the fi fine Underwood barbecue sauce for the $2. Thanks to Amy Bowen for $1. Arnie Stash, three legs, four wheels. Bond Stone, John Richardson, and Corey Kohler, all $1 donors on Patreon.com slash Geek. Thank you to the PayPal producers. All those uh, Patreon donors are Patreon producers. Thank you to the PayPal producers. Kirk Crawford, thank you for the $50 Christmas donation, Kirk Crawford. Thank you to Richard Fusey, friend of mine and friend of the show, for the $25 Christmas donation. Thank you to Donald Patterson for the $20. Thank you to Todd Cunningham, friend of the show and friend of mine, for the $10. Thank you to James Venners for the $10. Thank you to James Padgett for the $10. Thank you to Dave Jackson in the School of Podcasting for $10. Thank you to Jeff and Sherry Thielalicky for the $10. Thank you to Jason Shepard for the $10. Thank you to BJ Lisko for the $10. One more One more Hollywood Vampire song My favorite song in the album Congratulations I like this tune it Has Alice Cooper on vocals Joe Perry doing It's all a spoken word Alice Cooper doing spoken word Joe Perry doing spoken word And I think uh, Just Johnny Depp doing spoken word Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I shall fear right, Where am I here? Thank you to Ralph Miller, friend of mine and friend of the show, for the $10. Thanks to Dave Franco for the $10. Thank you to Kelly Mitchell for the $5. It laughs in my face. Thank you to Jero O'Carroll for the $5. The dark looks for me and can't understand. Let this roll for a minute. Right through its fingers. Congratulations. The cries of the crow become Joe Perry. Thank you to Cristel Grande for the five dollars. Thank you to Peter uh, Sigmund Heidacher for the five dollars. Thank you to Peter Spark for the five dollars. John Offenlock five dollars. Richard Fusey for another five dollars. Thank you to Richard Strom for the five dollars. Thank you to Andrew Howe for the five dollars. Thank you to Dale Roller for the five dollars. Thank you to Brett Garski for the five dollars. Thank you to. Every Benjamin Muller for the five dollars. To survive, the humanoid, selfish, ego, maniacal. And thank you to Dick. Okay, I gotta stop it here for a second. I'm trying to gonna try to pronounce his name right. Dick Shijit. Right, here's how you pronounce it. He sent me the pronunciation here. Listen to this. Schrauts. Thank you to Dick Strauss. Schrauts. Strauss. Schrauss. I still can't get it. Back to you, Hollywood vampires. Ugly needs. How much is enough? Fame. Being king of the rats. Time is vicious, dummy. Look at me. Thank you to John Tennis for the five dollars. Thank you to Greg Long for the five dollars. Thank you to Bre Blake Johnson for the five dollars. Congratulations. Thank you to Eric Lentz for the $5. Kelly Mitchell for the $5. Thank you to Michael Williams for the $5. Thank you to Deborah Dreyfus, if that's your real name, for the $2. Richard Fusey, $2. Jason Wendleton, $2. Robert Giglio of Cream Circus for the $2. Thank you to, I think he's in Cream Circus. Thank you to Stephen Bailey for the $2. Thank you to William Moffat for the $2. Lassie Satvidhagen, $2. Thank you to John Skiller for $2. Thank you to Bradford Page for the $2. Have I lost what was never given me? 
Also, I would like to say rest in peace. The Rock and Roll Geek Show lost a friend. Thomas Maddox passed away last week. Rest in peace, Thomas Maddox. Also, thank you to Brad Schick for the Christmas present. He just sent me a bunch of vinyl here. Keep the Faith vinyl from Black Oak, Arkansas. The Muffs, happy birthday to me on vinyl. Angel Sinful on vinyl. And Stars live at Municipal Auditorium, Louisville, March 30th, 1978, which is a radio broadcast. Thank you so much, Brad Schick. I really appreciate it, friend. Thank you to everybody who produced the Rock and Roll Geek Show this week or this month. This is a value for value. So whatever value you get from the Rock and Roll Geek Show, friends, I ask that you please contribute that value. Because without your donations, this show would die a horrible, putrid, stents-filled death. May Thomas Maddox rest in peace and Neil Peart rest in peace. We'll be scribbled and crayons on a scorching sidewalk. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations. All right. That's my top. That's number 10. Tied for number 10. All right. We're at number nine now. Sandy Hyde had this as his number one album of the year. Other people, who else had this album? Jesse Dinos had this as his number four album of the year. Said this album kept climbing his list all year. It actually climbed my list. I had it at number 10. But it, at, I last minute, I moved it higher up in the list. There's a band called... Oh, and James Schwab has this at number 9, tied with Jet Boy Born to Fly. The band is called Wayward Sons. The album is called The Truth Ain't What It Used to Be. Had it at number 10. I originally had it... <laughs> I was going to put it way higher and I gave it, I was listening while I was walking the dog and because this, the song I'm going to play is just a fantastic song. It's really great tune. Catchy as hell and rocking. There's about three or four other good songs in this album. The rest of the album does not stand up. So, it, it, but I just listened to a couple more songs today. So I, I lay, I, after listening again today, I last minute moved it higher up on the list. So it's now tied for number nine. This song, the band is called Wayward Sons. Uh, the drummer plays with Joe Elliott's Down and Outs. I believe it's the drummer. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Phil Martini. This song is called The Joke's on You. Coming in at number nine. Wayward Sons.
There you go. Wayward Sons. Coming in at number nine. Uh, another number nine tied. Oh, shit. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, what am I doing here? Okay, forget it. Hey, man. It don't get no more professional. I'm a podcast pioneer. Did you know that? <sighs> Another tie for number nine. There's lots of ties because I swear it, it was just so difficult narrowing this down. And I like these some of these albums equally as good. Whoever says whoever says that rock and roll is dead and there's no new good new music, it's is not out. It's not listening because there is a lot of good music every year. I find I have way more than ten top ten albums, so it's out there, friends. You just got to find it. So, and I have found a lot. Tied at number nine. This is also on several people's list. The band is called White Reaper. I was going to have them higher, but I saw them on Jimmy Kimmel. And they were a little too indie rock for me, although there's some really good tunes on this album. Some of them a little too indie rock, but there's good tunes on this album. And so for that reason, it's also tied at number nine. Michael Street has this at number six on his top ten list. Uh, other people have it on their list, too. Let me look here. I asked for people to, to um, contribute their top ten. So um, thank you for doing that on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group, friends. Uh, what did Sid, did Sandy Hyde have this on his? No, he didn't. But he all, but he had some honorable mentions too that I don't have on my Indonesian junk, which I have not heard. Suicide Bombers, Sweet Things. A lot of people had Sweet Things on theirs. I should give that an honorable mention. The thing about Sweet Things, I'm just not that big into the um, faces, Black Crowsy stuff. It's okay, but it's. It's not my favorite thing. Amel and the Sniffers. A lot of people had them on there. Casey loves Amel and the Sniffers. Not really my thing. It's okay. He has Cactusville from Hangman on there, too, which have not listened to it enough, so I, I should give that one a harder listen. So I apologize to some of these bands uh, for not making my top ten. Although, eh, does it really matter, friends? It's just a rock and roll. It's just a dumb podcast. Uh, also, Danko Jones, honorable mention to him. Uh, anybody else have White Reaper on their list? Uh, some other people did as well, but I can't find them at the moment. <clears throat> so they're number nine on my list. This song I'm going to play for you is called Headwind. The thing I like about White Reaper is they do the dual guitar solos and... Um, you know, a la the Almond Brothers and Thin Lizzy. So they get some Thin Lizzy comparisons, although they're nothing like Thin, thin Lizzy, all, other than the the harmon, harmony guitar solos. Uh, the guitar player was wearing a Aerosmith, I think he was wearing a Nine Live shirt when he was on Jimmy Kimmel. I was watching it at the Mountain House up in when I was uh, over the Christmas holidays. Did, I don't think they, this was, they did not play this song on Jimmy Kimmel, but I like this tune. This song is called Headwind, number nine, tied for number nine with, tied for, tied with, uh, let me see, I had Beyond the, but, uh, tied with Wayward Sons, White Reaper. This song is called Headwind.
There you go. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that, but as a podcast pioneer... I would suggest everybody unsubscribe to the Rock and Roll Geek Show because that unprofessionalism is just not called for on the top 10 albums of 2000. All right, enough of that. Okay, coming in at number eight. My friend Mick Cripps, who I also play in the Plunkets with, and Charlie on drums, and... Nigel Mogg on vocals from the Choir Boys, who also had an album out this year, which I have not heard, so I couldn't put that on my top ten because I just because only because I haven't heard it. Uh, they're also on Michael. The Brutalists are also on Michael Street's list. They came in at number ten for him. I have them at number eight. The album is called "We're Not Here to Help," and it's a fucking good album. <laughs> Kudos to Mick Cripps for this album. And and uh, Charlie and Kent and Nigel Mogg. Nigel Mogg was the bass player. Oh, pardon me. I'm burping up this fine Tecate. <sighs> Nigel Mogg played bass in the Choir Boys, but he sings lead in The Brutalists. I like this album. It's called We Are Not Here to Help. I think it's on Cleopatra Records, I think. This song is called Price on Your Head, number eight. On the Rock and Roll Geek Score uh, Top 10 of 2019. There you go. Number eight, The Brutalists. All right, coming in at number seven, another tie. First one in the tie for number seven. 
which <clears throat> surprised this made my top 10, but it did. It's a good album, and it's C.J. Ramon. Anybody else have C.J. Ramon? Alberto Art- Artioli had C.J. at number four. The album's called The Holy Spell. Uh, I don't think anybody else has him on the top 10, except for me. I have him at number seven. The song I'm gonna, the album's called The Holy Spell. I think he lives in the Bay Area now, too, because my friend Mick Punk uh, is friends with him. Put out a good album. It's a good, good pop punk album. It's just strong tunes, and I like it. The song I'm going to play, number seven, CJ Ramon. The song is called Blue Skies. <laughs> There you go. Number seven, C.J. Ramon. Pretty much the entire album's that good. That's a catchy tune, and most of the album is like that. Very pleasantly surprised. C.J. Ramon. Number seven. All right, also tied at number seven, only because it's so hard to narrow this down. My Facebook thing's going crazy, but I cannot close the Facebook because... I'm referring to other people's lists. Uh, other people also had C.J. Ramon. Jane Schwab had C.J. Ramon at uh, number seven, just like me. And uh, anybody else? I'm not sure who, who else. Uh, besides our, besides um, Alberto Artioli. Just the three of us. So, tied at number seven. Does anybody else have this band on their... I don't think so. I think I might be the only one with Black Star Riders in their top ten list. I think somebody else has us, but they made my top 10, put out a half-decent album. It is called Another State of Grace, this song from the Black Star Riders, coming in tied at number seven, <laughs> tied at number seven on the rock and roll, okay, enough of that bullshit, okay, tie, okay, <sighs> this song is Ain't the End of the World. Ain't the end 
of the week. Well, they said you were no good for me. That you would bring me down to your level. You said you would drag me through the mud and tarnish my name forever. Sometimes you gotta take them off with the smooth I can't lack all your rough edges Playing safe is only playing And I can't lack getting dangerous The next time that it rains That's why I come in the way Cause you're great at making choices Black Star Riders. Oh, by the way, wishing Ricky Warwick a uh, speedy recovery. He's got some form of pneumonia. He was in the hospital. When I played with Ginger down in L.A. Uh, at the Viper Room, it was me and uh, Billy Morrison, Scott Lips, and Ginger. We did a few shows down in L.A. And Ricky Warwick got up on stage and played Sick of Drugs with us. And I remember, I think I've said this before, but I remember when we were sound checking um, Sick of Drugs, and I could not believe I was standing on stage with all these guys playing one of my favorite songs of all time. So, so congratulations to uh, Ricky Warwick for making the very important top 10 albums of 2019 of the Rock and Roll Geek Show because there is no other list more important than the Rock and Roll Geek Show top albums of 2019. <clears throat> Congratulations, Ricky Warwick. You get the grand prize of... <clears throat> I take a sip of this fine Tecate to you. That's your prize. Ah! Okay, coming in at number six. This band is on nobody's list. <laughs> at least nobody on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group, but it made my list... Band is from Switzerland. They're on uh, Spaghetti Town Records. Uh, the guys from um, 
what's that band? Eddie Spaghetti. What's his band called? Super Suckers. They're on his label. The band is from Switzerland. They are called the Bitch Queens. And I like this album a lot. It is a good rockin' punk rock album with catchy tunes. This song is called Super... Well, the, al- the album is called... I'm holding back this burping of the fine Tecate. Pardon me. The album is called City of Class from Bitch Queens. This song is called Super Boy. Tied in another two-way tie, friends. I apologize for all the ties, but it is difficult to break to narrow this down to ten. So it's my list. I can do what I want, damn it. Here is Bitch Queens. The song is called Superboy. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. Oh, it's Superboy. Is he a miracle or is he just a fake? Is he the spiritual gangster on the make? Look, look up there. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Or just a boy dripping his balls off on cocaine? He floats down like an angel from the sky. Asking when your credit card expires. go number six bitch queens from switzerland i'm the only one who had them on their top 10 list tied for top tied for number six jesse mallon album is called uh what is the album called sunset kids few people had this on had them on uh, had jesse mallon on their list uh, ken parker has them at number five um i think alex oliver maker of sleazy of uh, uh Bathroom Wall T-shirt, sleazy rock and roll, um, bathroomwall.co.uk, and maker of the fine rock and roll geek clothing line. Go to ilovemichaelbutler.com and use the promo code I Love Michael Butler for any for free shipping anywhere in the world. He has them on his list as well. Uh, 
few people had Jesse Mallon as honorable mentions. Tied for number six for me. I was going to do a track by track of this album, and I never got around to doing it. I probably will never get around to doing it, but uh, I like the album. Jesse Mellon albums can be hit or miss, but I, th- I think this is a pretty good album. This song is called Chemical Heart. They say you got a chemical heart. To try to prove it different is the hardest part. They say it's on the tip of your tongue. You've been making up excuses since you were young. I don't want to be your babysitter. I don't want to be your 5 a.m. I don't want to be your Jake LaMotta. I don't want to take your ex-best friend. You're standing on the edge of the world. You're walking down the street like this year's girl. I'm calling it a chemical crime. You got a lot of nothing, but it's mine, mine, mine. Say no, no. Stepping stone They say you got a chemical kiss You're breaking down the atoms To get your fix You're looking like a knife in your heart I'm Wishing that it's different Is the hardest part Singing na 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 Have you seen your mother Baby sleeping on the floor Vacation crying in the shower stall I don't want to be your ivory tower I don't want to be your broken home I don't want to be your plastic surgeon I don't even want to walk you home You say you got a chemical heart you Try to prove it different is the hardest part I'm calling it a chemical crime You got a lot of nothing but it's mine, mine, mine There you go. <sighs> number five or number six, that was um, tied with number six, Jesse Mellon, Sunset Kids. That's almost Chemical Heart. All right, sitting by it by themselves at number five on the top ten, give or take six or seven, Rock and Roll Geek top ten albums of 2019. Backyard Baby, Silver and Gold. They put out an album. They reunited several years ago and put out an album that sucked ass, in my opinion. It sounded like Warp Tour music. It was just horrible. Then they put out this album this year called Silver and Gold, and it's good. Casey and I did a track-by-track track on it. By the way, if you are... Oh, let me find these. Let me find these notes with all the track-by-tracks. You you might be saying, looking back at some of these um, albums I did track by tracks on, and wonder why they're why I gave them not as good of scores, and I put them higher high on the top ten. I don't know. My taste can change, friends. For instance, um, Black Star Riders, I gave a seven out of ten. Uh, an album that's way high on my list, I only gave a 7.5 out of 10. It's way higher on my list, and I'll talk about that. Hollywood Vampires, I gave a 10 out of 12, and it's down on low on my list. So I, there's no rhyme or reason, friends. I just did it. I can't tell you why I just did, all right? Why was I saying this? I don't remember. Oh, because of Backyard Babies. I, I found out we did a track by track, and I can't find the... I can't find the uh, scoring system, the score that we gave them. I think we gave it a pretty good score, though. But they're on a lot of people's list. Uh, James Logan put them on as number three on his top ten. Uh, I think Alex Oliver has on his list. Um, 
Sandy Hyde has him on his list. Uh, does Mike? Does Michael Street have him on his list? No, he doesn't. But there's a lot of people have them on the list, and it's a good album. Although the song I'm going to play for you sounds a lot, a lot like a, a helicopter song called By the Grace of God, but it's a great tune. There's a lot of good songs in this album, so kudos to Backyard Babies for making a strong album. Number five, by itself on the top thin, uh, top th- on the top thin of 2019. All right. 44 Undead from Backyard Babies. themselves at number five backyard babies all right number four is another tie i thought i saw somebody had this on their list but i don't see it this band is called jordan jones it might be a guy named jordan jones i don't know anything about this guy jordan jones all i know is on spaghetti town records casey turned me on to this when casey guest hosted for me as me he played this and i went out and got the record and well actually um Spaghetti Town Records actually sent it to me, believe it or not. And it's a quality, quality record. I have never heard of this guy, Jordan Jones, but it's every song in this record is catchy. If you don't have it, go out and find it, friends. It's called It's a self-titled album. It's just Jordan Jones. The song I'm gonna play for you 
a tie, this is a tie for number four because I'm running, I'm getting to the top of the list and I got a lot more albums to go through that I like even more than these. So I had to put a lot of ties. Jordan Jones, this song, I just picked one out of the hat on this album because every song in this album is catchy. My Somebody. Jordan Jones, somebody. Maybe a little too power poppy for you, but extremely catchy tunes. A little lo-fi, but I don't mind the lo-fi. I just like I like a good tune, and there's tons of good tunes on that record. Again, that record is called just Jordan Jones. All right, tied for that album. I could have put this album a lot higher, but I don't know why, because I don't, I didn't, because there's albums that I like better than the than the one that's tied for number four, Michael Monroe, One Man Gang, just about everybody on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group had this on their top ten list. Chad Burns, number two, uh, Sandy Hyde had him at like number six or something like that. James Logan has him has Michael Monroe, One Man Gang at number at number uh, six. Alberto Artioli has number six. Alex Oliver, like number five. I think everybody has has this album on their top ten. Just about. Well, it's on mine too. Tied for number four. One Man Gang from Michael Monroe. Quality album. Is it better than the last one? I don't know. Hard to say. I think the last one might have been a little bit better, but... Still a good album. Rich Jones wrote a lot more songs on this one. Catchy tunes. Um, Steve Conte listened to my track by track that I did when I guessed who wrote was writing all the songs, and he he commented that uh, I got just about all of it wrong. <laughs> of course I did, but it's a good album. This song I'm going to play for you is "Last Train to Tokyo" from Michael Monroe, One Man Gang, tied at number four on the Rock and Roll Geek. Top 10, give or take six or seven, of 2019.
There you go, Michael Monroe. Last train to Tokyo. Okay, we're now at the top three. It's very difficult. I got actually one, two, four bands left to go on the top three. <laughs> difficult, man, because my top two actually stand alone at two at on their own. There's nothing tied with my top one and my top top two, and three. I like one of them a little bit better than the other one, but they're by the same artist. <laughs> that leaves me tied for number three: Ginger Wildheart, Heads of Poppin', and Wildheart's Renaissance Men. I actually like Heads of Poppin' a little bit better only because of the production. I mean, Renaissance Man is just a fucking monster album. The only thing that makes it not up there higher is the production. Everybody raves on this album, but a few people besides me don't like the production on it. But most of the people just can't rave enough about Renaissance Man. It's a great album. Just the production is not quite up. That's why it's a little bit below Heads of Poppin' from Ginger Wildheart. But I got but I'm down to four songs. I'm down to four. I'm down to my top three, but I got four artists or four albums. So for that reason, I gotta have a tie between the Wild Hearts and Ginger Wildheart. Alright, so coming in at number three, tied. Here's the Wild Hearts. Possibly. This is another hard, difficult thing. Possibly my favorite song of the year. But it's only on my top three. It's only in my third favorite album. And my number one album, nothing even comes close to it. And my number two album, nothing comes close to it. So I'm a little bit of a quandary, but that's just the way it is, my friends. Everybody has a darkness um, Renaissance men on their top ten. Michael Street has a number three. Uh, shit, I think every single person has it in their top ten, just about. And every like rock magazine in Europe or in England has it in their top ten as well. The best song, one of the best songs of 2019 is on Renaissance Men, and you know what it is, friends. Here it is.
There you go. So catchy, but the production, it's bludgeoning that production, and it, it's exhausting to listen to. It is so good, but whenever I listen to this album, it would be higher on my list, but I guess... What's well, pretty high on the list? I am. It's a number three, tied for number three. But it's exhausting listening to it because it's just the production is so. I know that's what he wants. Want I know that's what he was going for, but it just wears you out listening to it. I can't explain it. You probably know what I'm talking about, but man, what a. <laughs> You can't say anything about gender songwriting. The guy's a fuck. The guy really, uh, people use the gene, work, term genius, around, toss that around, but the guy is a fucking genius. <laughs> Speaking of genius, tie, he tied himself for number three with Heads of Poppin'. Now, some people said that this should not be qualified for number three or for a 2019 because the physical release didn't come out. He hasn't sent out the physical releases, but the MP3s were out there. I'm considering it. I'm putting it in in, as in 2019. Sorry, it's in my list. Number three, the album's called Heads of Poppin'. Way cleaner production and just as good of songwriting. <sighs> Enough can't be said about the genius of Ginger Wildheart. This song is called Zap. <laughs>
There you go. The great Ginger Walhart. Tied for number three. All right. My number two album. Few other pe- a few other people have this on their list. I hope, or, what do you think? You think this list is okay, friends? I did my best. It's just very, very difficult to narrow this down. I hope you're okay with this list. I think I am. There's a lot of good records came out this year. Uh, Earl Inf has this album at number five, my number, which is my number two album. Uh, Jesse Denos has this as number two. He says, I listened to this a lot, a ton, and it kept getting better. That's the way I feel about this album. When I first heard this album, I thought it was okay. The more I listened to it, the better it got. This album is fucking great. Pardon my uh, Tony the Tiger impression. This album is called A Prayer for the Loud, D.A.D., Jesper Benzer has one of the most original voices, and I love it. Stig Peterson, one of my favorite bass players, plays a two-string bass. Come on. (laughs) And Jesper's brother is playing guitar, and he has original guitar tone as well. This album is great. Every song is good on this album. This song I'm going to play, I just pulled out of my ass because it's one of my... They're all, the, all the songs in this album are good. Here's The Real Me from D.A.D. coming in at number two on the Rock and Roll Geek Top 10, give or take six or seven of 2019. This is called The Real Me from D.A.D.
That album is great. All right, we're at the number one, friends. On the Rock and Roll Geek 4 uh, Facebook page, which I did not create, but I do approve. People just got to answer two questions. Uh, Pete Winezetti said, hey, Michael Butler, you should also do a Best Album of the Decade show this time around. Best Album of the Decade, not 2019. That is a very, very difficult one for me to pull off, Pete. Jesse Denno says, or maybe each of your albums of the year for the last decade. That would require me going, well, did I have that done? That would require me going back for the last 10 years and listening to every top 10 album episode. I guess I could do that. Did I, have I done one the last 10 years? I don't think I've done 10. That's something I'll, I'll have to think about that, Pete Wanzetti. That's a lot of work, and uh, I'm already working my ass off as it is, but I will think about that. But thank you for the suggestion. I really appreciate it. It's a, good, it's a really good suggestion. If you want me to take up Pete's uh, suggestion, send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. We are down to number one now. Thank you for listening, friends. If you agree with me, pretty much more or less on my top 10, give or take six or seven of on the Rock and Roll Geek Show 2019, top albums of 2019, send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com with the subject line, Butler, you've done it again. You have the best taste in music and your top 10. 10, give or take 6 or 7, is just brilliant. You're a genius. Put that in the subject line. If you disagree, send me an email to rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Let me think of this fine Takate while I think of a subject line. Uh, if you disagree, send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com with the subject line, Butler. Who the hell are you kidding? You did not put Rival Sons in your top 10? You suck! Give it up, you loser! Eddie Trunk rules! Put that in the subject line, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. All right. (laughs) Thank you for listening, friends. Before I play the top number one album, nothing came close to this to me. The Darkness, Easter is canceled. A lot of people add them on their list. I don't know if anybody has them at number one, but I am at number one. I listened, to, I listened to all these albums while I was at work, at least most of them, because I something's going on with my iTunes and it wasn't connecting to the cloud or some bullshit like that. But I listened to this one top to bottom while I was at work painting. And it made me so happy hearing this music. None of the all other albums that I listened to, besides D.A.D., made me smile as much as this album, Easter is Canceled from the Darkness. And that is what put it at number one. Besides the fact that, that, that Justin Hawkins is the last, truly the real last rock and roll star that we have on this earth. He is a star. And he is a great guitar player. For that reason, friends, I put The Darkness Easter is canceled at number one. Thank you for, before I play it, thank you for listening. Rock and Roll Geek at gmail.com. Find this show at rockandrollgeek.com. You can find me on the Facebook, r and Geek. Join the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group. There's a lot of good discussion as you can, if you get on there, I mean, this, the, just the top 10 list from people is, is worth, worth it. Richard Fuse, lots of great posts. Everybody's, everybody that posts on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group is extremely knowledgeable about rock and roll, More, even so more than me. <clears throat> I'm probably the least knowledgeable of all these guys. So go there, Rock and Roll Geek Show on Facebook. You just have to answer two simple questions, so I know you're not a Russian hacker or a Ukrainian uh, spy. You can find me on the Twitter, r and Geek. You can find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek. If you're coming to the Pat Travers Show, which is sold out tomorrow, come say hi, friend. And use the secret phrase. Super great. Couldn't be better. And I will give you a beer out of my stash, friends. All right. Thank you for listening. 
I'll talk to you. I'm going to make sure I do a show this coming week because I don't think I have band practice or anything like that all week. So I'll have a little bit more. I do have a mad at dad to do. Other than that, I think I'll have a little bit more time to pull a rock and roll geek show out of my ass. I apologize for for the inconsistency. I know I apologize all the time, but that's just the way it is. I've been busy as hell. I'm going to try my best next week to get a show out. Thank you for listening. And if you care... Thank you even more for caring, because without you, friends, this show ain't happening. And please keep the donations coming, because without your donations, this show ain't happening either, friends. All right. Here's, I had a trouble picking one to play, because they're all good. So I just pulled Live Till I Die off. It was going to be either that or Heart Explodes. I'm going to play Live Till I Die. Thank you for listening, friends. I will talk to you soon. Stay frosty. I was born out of wedlock on the 17th day of the third month of 75. I was my daddy working every hour, got sense just to keep all of my dreams alive. It's a rock and roll geek train wreck.